this is the first Tuesday night just to get back to some straight teaching, and I'm real excited about it. Amen? And um, this is not a preaching night, this is a teaching night. So this is a night that you want to take notes. Um, on a Tuesday night, we're actually just trying to build line upon line, precept upon precept. And uh, I, know, uh, I know that I know that I know that one of the strongest calls that Michelle and I both have, number one, to preach on faith, and number two, to preach on love. I know that I know that I know that everything that we do is going to come out of one of those two veins. Amen? And uh, they work together. Now, you can't have one without the other. And so I'm excited to get back into a little bit of faith tonight. And, uh, you know, as we were going through worship, uh, it was so good. You know, there's just certain songs that, you know, that just get you. And just to be able to sit there and just tell God how good he is and how good he's been to us. And I felt like, and I don't know if this is a word for somebody, maybe it is, but uh, there's somebody and you're going through a process. And we're all going through process, aren't we? Our whole lives is nothing but just going from process to process. But I, I feel like the Lord added this on top of it. He wants us to enjoy each part of the process. Amen? Enjoy. I enjoyed the time when my children were really, really small. I enjoyed that part of the process. I enjoyed it when they were, when I was able to coach them in baseball, in softball. I enjoyed that part of the process. You know what I'm saying? I think each time as we're being led, as God is moving our lives and as we are moving from transition to transition, from process to process, enjoy where you are right now because you're never going to be here again. Amen? Enjoy the people that you're around with now. You may never be with this group of people again. That's not a foreboding or anything weird that's going to happen tonight. But I'm saying, enjoy it now. Enjoy your life. Enjoy the process. Enjoy knowing that if God has, left, has led you this far, he's not just going to stop now. Amen? He didn't lead us out to sea and then just cut the rope and say, well, you're on your own now. Amen. We are constantly moving from one thing to another and enjoy the process. Amen. Well, I want to talk about faith, but first I just want to remind us of the four big things that we're doing starting on January 1st, 2020. Number one, how many of us are enjoying reading Matthew? Amen. We're reading through the Bible together, as Vincent said. We're doing a chapter a day, Monday through Friday. And uh, uh, it's very simple to do. We're all doing it together. I've already gotten so much good revelation out of Matthew, and I've read it 20, 30, 50 times probably before. But there's something about us doing it together and doing it with a notepad and a piece of paper. And I am purposing to write down a note or two or three every day. And that is helping stimulate me looking. I'm going into the Bible. I'm looking for something on purpose. So I want to encourage us to do that. Number two is we want to be doers of the word. And a doer of the word does the Great Commission. So we're endeavoring to be a part of at least one outreach this year. And if the, you can't do that, I feel like I can add an addendum. Invite one person to church. Amen? Either an attend an outreach on a regular, or at least once a year, or purpose in your heart to invite at least one person to church this year. That's outreach. Amen? Number three, uh, I'm going to uh, worship the Lord with my gifts and my tithes and my offerings. I got a major revelation on tithing the other day. You want to hear what it is? I do not have to make more money in order to tithe. I do not have to go take out a loan or get an extra job so I can tithe. I just tithe off of what I have now. It doesn't cost me any more. Isn't that good? I'm not waiting to get a better job so I can start to tithe. I can just start right now with what I have. That's what... That's what it's supposed to be. Amen? And then finally, number four on our list is that we're looking to get involved in some sort of a team here at West Houston Christian Center. We are going to do a helps breakfast next month. And uh, I don't have the exact date in front of me, but it will be in February. And we're going to do a helps appreciation breakfast. And we're going to make you breakfast. And then we're going to break you off in your specific groups. And we're going to take some time and just do a little in-service with you and a little training and those types of things. But it helps being a part of the body when we're connected to a team. Amen? When you know that you know that someone's counting on you to be there, 
It's that little extra we need sometimes when we're not maybe feeling. We always don't feel like going to church. I know you don't because you're always here. But there's another group of people that comes here that, well, no. It happens to all of us sometimes. Amen. Well, we just don't feel like going. But if I know that, you know, Miss Barbara's going to be back there with those kids and, and she's counting on me to help her tonight, then I'm going to go back. I'm going to make sure that I'm there. Amen. And it just helps us. Uh, and it's part of discipleship. Serving is a part of our discipleship. Amen. Uh, he does, he, God could have asked so much more of us than he did. He really didn't ask a whole lot of us. And, and I like how Vincent always says it. Don't you like when Vincent exhorts? It's so good. I wonder if you're hard of hearing because he keeps asking, can you hear me? But I know you can hear because you're hearing me right now. But uh, I love how he exhorts, and uh, I love how he encourages all of us to, uh, I was going somewhere else with that, but then that just flew away. All right, so I want to talk about faith tonight, amen? But I want to talk about a specific aspect of it, the testing of your faith, amen? How many of us have a faith project? Every one of us should have a faith project. Rachel has a nine-month faith project. Amen. She's about to take the test. Amen. She's been studying and preparing, and she's read every book, and they've prepared the room, and she's done everything she knows how to do. Rachel is prepared for the test. Amen. And that test is just on the other side. Right? Next week. Amen? And then there'll be another test, and then another test, and another test. But I really just feel strongly, each and every one of us, is you're going to have an opportunity to be tested in what you're believing for. You just are. If you're not tested in it, then I would question what you're believing for. Amen? There is going to come a point when you are going to question, is this ever going to happen? Why hasn't it happened already? Have you ever experienced that already? How many of you are believing for some of that 20-year stuff? I've been believing for this thing for 20 years. I have good news for you. Don't let go. Amen? Amen. There's some of that 20-year stuff, and then there's some of that immediately stuff. I like the immediately stuff of what I'm believing for. But if we ever got, if we always got everything immediately, we would never develop any of the world's most favorite words. Starts with a P. What is it? Patience. Amen. We have to learn to be patient and wait on the Lord. Amen. Having done all to stand, stand. Don't you hate that verse? No, it's a great verse. But having done all to stand, Rachel has done all to stand. Stand, therefore, in the power of the Lord. Amen? So I want to talk tonight about the testing of our faith. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 17. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 17. It says, By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac... And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. The New Living Translation says it this way. It was by faith that Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice when God was testing him. As I said before, you will be tested in some point for what you're believing for. How are we tested? I've come up with just four things. There's probably more than that, but these are just the four that I came up with with some corresponding verses. How am I going to be tested in my faith? Number one, there is going to come a point where I'm going to have to give evidence of what I'm believing for. And I got this picture of a a trial, of a judge, of a jury, of a defense attorney, of a prosecutor. Ask me how I know how all that works one day. I'll tell you. It's a pretty funny story. Anyway, I get a picture of what what I am believing for. There is going to be an opportunity where I'm going to have to produce evidence corresponding to what I'm believing. Does everybody understand that faith without works is dead? Faith without corresponding actions is dead. 
So at some point in my faith project, no matter if you're believing for a bar of soap, no matter if I'm believing for a new car, no matter if I'm believing for someone's soul, no matter if I'm believing for a new house, there's going to come a time when the evidence of what I am believing for is going to be asked of me and I'm going to have to give a showing of what I really believe. Do I have corresponding actions to what I'm believing for? The most famous story, the town was having a drought. They hadn't had rain in days. The crops were all dying. The church got together. They went that night and they prayed for rain. They prayed for rain. They prayed for rain. They came back the next night and only one little girl brought an umbrella. She had corresponding actions to what she was really believing for. Everybody else was praying that the rain would come, but one little girl actually had corresponding actions. She had faith to show, I have evidence of what I'm believing for. Amen? Do we have evidence of what we're believing for? I could have believed God for my kids to go to college. Lord, I am believing God for you, for my kids to go to college. Lord, it's your will for my children to go to college. They're going to go to college. I thank you, God. I could have even sown some seed towards it. But if they never applied to that college, they're never going to get in. There has to be a corresponding action to what I am believing for. Amen? That is the trial of our faith. That's when we lay all the evidence on the table. And we say, is there enough evidence on this table to convict that person of what they're believing for? Amen? That is the testing of our faith. James chapter 2, verse 26. James chapter 2, verse 26. James chapter 2, verse 26. For as the human body apart from the spirit is lifeless, so faith apart from its works of obedience is also dead. Amen? Number two, how are we tested? What am I really putting my trust in? And this is a big one. It's one thing to say that I'm believing God in faith for X, Y, Z, but am I really putting my faith in a person or something else or a system to bring to pass what I'm believing for? Is my faith really in God for what I'm believing for? Amen? There are no plan Bs when it comes to faith. Lord, I'm going to believe God for this car. Father, I just thank you, Lord, I'm going to believe God for this car. But you know, if it doesn't work out, I can go to my dad and he could sign a loan for me. See the difference? Am I of two minds or am I of one mind in believing? I'm double-minded in that area. If I'm double-minded, I'm not going to receive anything. Amen? I can't, it's, it's not like playing cards at Vegas where I'm just trying to cover all my bets. When I am tested in my faith, listen to me. This is all going to boil down to is do you, is God who he says he is and can he do what he said he could do? I like something that my dad, he shares a testimony. It was probably about Jenny Stinson, I think, when we were praying for Jenny. And you said the Lord told you to paint yourself in a corner. Do you remember that? Sometimes when it comes to faith, we have to paint ourselves into a corner where there's no way else that this thing can happen unless he does it. Amen? That's faith. It's easy to believe God for money when you already have money. Amen. Faith has got to be used for something that is bigger than what I already have or what I already own. Faith and hope don't work in things. I don't have to have faith or hope for my Bible. I already have my Bible. Right? I can see it. I can touch it. I can feel it. It takes me no faith. But to get your Bible, now that takes some faith. Amen. Because it's outside of me. It doesn't belong to me. Amen? So, what am I really putting my trust in? And we have to ask ourselves that question on a regular basis. Am I trusting in a doctor? Am I trusting in a politician? Am I trusting in my spouse? 
Who's my source? Come on. We have to ask. These are hard questions, but this is where faith is. Amen? Faith is not out there with a multitude of opinions and ideas, and, you know, I just grab that one at this time. It's faith or it's nothing. Amen? I'm either using my faith and believing God for it and doing the steps of faith, or I'm trying to make this thing out of my own understanding and make it come to happen. Have you ever tried to make something happen on your own? It's miserable. It's frustrating, isn't it? Amen? I want that, and I want it now. All right, get it by faith. Well, that takes too long. Actually, faith is the quickest way for anything that you're wanting in your life right now. Amen? You can rush out. You can go buy that car. You can have 375 easy payments of $99.95, but you'll never enjoy that car because it doesn't have, it wasn't, it wasn't, purchased by faith faith is the most precious thing in this room right now it's not your money it's not your hair it's not your phone the most precious thing in this room right now is your faith that's what we need we need to use our faith right now amen all of us need to right now by faith take a step up in the spirit of what i'm believing for say i'm not tired i'm not worried I'm not confused. I'm full of faith. I'm full of faith. Jesus said, I can have what I say. Therefore, I say, I'm stirred up. I'm not tired. I'm not lonely. I'm not angry. And I'm not hungry. Got you on that one. Number three, and this is a big one, am I really prepared to stand until this thing manifests? Am I committed to what I am believing for? And here's the statement. This is the one that gets you. If you can make this statement and you can do it honestly. Now, look, I also understand I am coming to these revelations to process and I am sharing them with you tonight, you're going to have to come to this, your, your own self, in your walk of faith or whatever light of revelation, so I don't expect you to do that. Does that make sense? But we are all having to come to the place. Let me, let me read that one more time. To make this one statement, that God, I am willing to stand until if it happens, I die and come to be with you. If I never see this thing, I'm still prepared to stand forever. When you're prepared to stand forever, it won't take that long. That's faith. Faith doesn't say, I'm going to give this thing six months. If it doesn't happen, I'm going to go get a second job. I'm going to make this thing happen on my own. That's not how faith works. Faith is a decision to believe God And to stand as long as it takes to receive whatever it is that you're believing for. Amen? So I have to, am I willing? I don't have a car right now. I'm believing God for a car. I'm having to walk to work. I'm having to take a bus. It's not fun. It's uncomfortable. I don't like it. But I know that God wants me to stand and believe him for this car. Great. How long are you going to be willing to stand? Until it turns cold outside? Until it gets hot outside? See what I'm saying? Are we really committed to what we're believing for? Amen? Are you willing to believe for that family member in the face of the worst adversary you've ever seen in them? When the relationship is getting worse and not better, are you still willing to stand in faith for that person's soul? See, when you're willing to do that, your answer's coming right then and there. When you're willing to stand irregardless of time, irregardless of circumstance, then whatever it is that you're believing for is coming right then and there. Amen? But you got to be willing to stand. You're going to be tested in this. How many of you ever believed God for something and said, wow, that came way too soon? I am so disappointed that that thing I believe for, it got here. I, sh- Has anybody ever said that ever? No, there's nothing in the Bible about that at all. 
Amen? It's through faith and patience that we receive or we inherit the promises. Amen? Through faith and patience. And number four, am I willing to give or sow whatever he asks of me towards whatever I'm believing? Am I willing to give my best? Is there something that I have? Is it a personal possession? Is it time? Is it a hobby? Is it a, a vehicle? Is it a family heirloom? Is it something? Each one of us has something that is incredibly dear and special to us with sentimental value. Listen to me. God did not ask Abraham for a mule, for his best mule. He didn't ask him for his best sheep. He didn't ask him for his staff. He asked him for what? He asked him for Isaac. He asked him, are you willing to give me your very best? That's tough. Has God ever asked you to give something or sow something that was precious to you? It'll check you out. It really will. I mean, I'm going to get to a phrase here at the end, hopefully, and, and it, it's... This type of living, it will keep, it will, it brings everything out into the open. When you live a life by faith, it really shows you who's my source, who do I, um, whom do I really trust, and what power do material things have over me. It just really does, because God doesn't ask for your third best or your fifth best. God said, okay. You believe me for this. You've been believing for something for, for 20 years, and you finally get it. And God says, okay, you really want to see something cool? Take that and give it to the person next to you. What? All of a sudden, our spiritual hearing goes like, I, I don't hear you so good anymore. What? Speaking to my good ear, God, I don't hear you much anymore. Amen? But see, what he's looking for is, do I love him more then I love this thing that I'm believing him for. Is this thing going to take his place in my life? And if the answer to that is no, have 50 of them. Have 100 of them. Whatever that thing in your life is, have a million of them. Don't care, because you know why? Because that thing doesn't own you now. You trust God. You're willing, listen to me. God was willing to give his very best for us. We can reciprocate and give our very best to him. Very rarely does he ask, and there's some, we're going to get into a couple of examples where God makes that request of people, but when he asks of you to give whatever it is that you have at hand, he is, there's, there's this, this mountain, this fountain of blessing that pours into whoever that person is once you give it. Once you release it, it's like all of a sudden he comes in and he fills up all the places with goodness and blessing and finances and prosperity and all that stuff. Because I was willing to give away one little handful of flour to the prophet of God. I was just going to make a, make a little cake and my son and I were going to eat it. Then we were just, we're just going to go die. And the prophet said in Kings, well, go make me a cake first out of it. What? Did you not hear what I said? I'm about to go eat this, give some to my son, then we're going to go over there and die because we don't have any more. And the prophet says, give it to me. And that woman never ran out of flour, and that woman never ran out of oil. And she was one of the most prosperous people in the times of the most adverse famine on the face of the earth because she was willing to give her very best to God. That is the testing of of your faith. Amen? Y'all all right tonight? I'm getting some looks. Oh my goodness. Have you ever heard this before? A little bit? All right. Listen to me. This is where faith moves from a theory to a working, effectual, living faith. We can talk about faith. We can be a theory. We can do a grant. We can do a big bored about it and I can show you the formula of a faith but when it gets down to when God says okay give me give that thing to that person over there all of a sudden it goes from theory to oh my gosh this thing just got real amen we want faith is a living 
breathing, effectual thing in the earth. It's not just a bunch of theology. It's not a magic spell of just speaking things. It is something that is living and breathing and inside each. It came from God himself when you got born again. He gave each and every one of us the measure of faith. He said, I'm going to make this even better than you can imagine. I'm not just going to give you your earthly human faith. I'm going to give you a portion of my faith. And you, when you develop my faith, you'll be able to do what I do. See, it's a voice-activated system in the earth today. Our whole life, we are supposed to be speaking what we believe and seeing what we say. We are supposed to be so filled with faith that when I speak to a situation, it should change in the name of Jesus. When a storm comes and we stand outside and we say, in the name of Jesus, you will not pass, that storm cannot pass because it's a voice-activated system. That tornado was trained. It doesn't hear my voice. It hears Jesus' voice. And storms are afraid of Jesus. He totally dilutes them of their power. Amen? So our whole life should be feeding on the Word of God, getting revelation, spending time with Him, but we should spend most of our day speaking to situations that are coming around not just conforming to them as they come by. Well, that's just terrible. It's going to be the worst flu season they've ever said. Now, that's just a shame. Oh, my airplane went down, 140 people were killed. Oh, that's terrible. We're so conditioned by news just to listen and to watch. See, sometimes I think we're the great cloud of witnesses. But God is saying, you're not ready to be the great cloud of witnesses. You're running the race. We want to climb up there in the stands and watch with everybody else and say, who that's a good one? They're running a good race, aren't they? And God's like, dingbat, you're supposed to be running the race. When you come up here, when you're with me, then you'll be a part of the great cloud of witnesses. But sometimes that's what church is. It's a great cloud of witnesses. Wow, what are they going to do today? Jerry Pierce yelled, oh, that must have been the Jesus in the service today. God wants us to participate with what's going on. This is not a spectator sport. Faith keeps me engaged. It keeps me from being a sluggard in my spirit. If I get saved and I don't do anything to cultivate the faith that's inside of me, I, I spiritually will go to sleep. So faith is what keeps me alive. It's what keeps me activated. It's, it's what keeps me growing. It's what keeps me teaching me and growing me. So we should always be believing God for what? Something. We should always have a multitude of faith projects going. And here's the best part, and this is the part that I've been missing a little bit. We should be excited about it. Are you excited about what you're believing for? Are you excited? Rachel, are you excited? Yeah, now you're blessed because your faith project's going to look right, right, like right back at you and love you and care for you. That's wonderful. Amen. How do we know that we're in faith? Because I'm excited about what I'm believing for. See, I can't, make, I can't fake it out and be excited about something that I don't believe. I'm excited that that person, I see them serving God. I see them with their hands raised. I see them turning from their ways. I see them living the life that God has for them. I see that person. I see them healed. I see them delivered. I see them free from all oppression and depression. I see that new car that I'm believing for. It's a beautiful car. Lord, I'm so excited. I've already received and taken ownership of that car before I ever put my hands on the steering wheel. I'm excited about what I'm believing for. That is the posture of true faith. Do you really believe what you're believing for? Then there should be joy attached to it. Why should there be joy? Because you already have it. Amen? Amen. Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 and 2. It says, Sometime later, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, here I am, he answered, verse 2. 
Take your son, God said, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, and I will show you. Now, there is so much going on in that verse. Amen? We believe through study that that when God asked Abraham to give his son and Abraham did it, then that gave God the right to give his son Jesus in the New Testament to us. Amen? When Abraham freely offered Isaac, then God said, covenant, now I can freely offer Jesus. You see what was happening there? Amen? But God was still asking Abraham for his very best, the promise. God asked him for the very promise of what he had been believing for. That's very, very important in our faith projects. Amen? Be willing to give whatever it is that he asks of you. Amen? Listen to me. When God, remember, and we all know this, and I I say it a lot, but when God asks something from us, he's trying to get some more to us. Whenever God says, I'm I'm asking you for that little, little handful of flour, I'm not trying to rob a widow and her son. Could you imagine the news these days if the preacher did that? Preacher takes the last handful of flour from a widow. God wasn't trying to get that from her. He was saying, if you'll just let go of whatever that is that you're holding on to and trust me, I'll flood you with more of this than you've ever seen. I'll, I'll show you a miracle that you've never seen before. I'll fill every jar up in here with oil. Go get a boat. We'll fill that up. Whatever it takes, I will make. And it prospered that lady and it prospered that son through the entire drought. And all she had to do was just give that little thing that she had. Amen? It's very, very important. Joshua 6.3. God gave Joshua a very specific plan for Jericho. And he told them, March around the city once with all the armed men and do this for six days. Now, I'm not, I never was in the military, but I do know that if you are to take your army, march them around the walls of your enemy, where all that enemy has to do is drop rocks on your head, or it's not the most sound strategic military maneuver the old circle around Jericho once a day for six days every day. Amen? Sometimes faith is going to ask you to do something way outside of your comfort zone. Amen? It was way outside of Joshua's comfort zone to march around that city every day for six days and not say a word. They didn't say a word. And then on the seventh day, they marched around it seven times, and then what happened? It's a voice-activated system. They yelled, they shouted, and the walls of Jericho came down. Amen? Am I willing to get outside of my own understanding? See, this is the testing of our faith. You're never going to fully understand what your, how this procedure works. And if you sit there and try and figure out how God's going to get money to you, it's never going to come. I have a litany of ways which I've told God how he can bless me. Many ways. When I was in Bible school, you could always tell the Bible school students because we got home and we always went to the mailbox. Because that's what we were hoping, that somebody sent us some money. And if there was money, it was going to be in that mailbox. Amen. Don't limit God on how he does what he wants to do in your life. Don't lean to your understanding. Sometimes he's going to ask you to do something in your natural mind. It's not going to make sense. But what he's trying to teach you is obedience. Are you going to do this the way that I show you how to do this so I can maximize what I'm trying to get to you? If you will do things God's way and in God's timing, you will get God's rewards. If you will listen to what he's telling you, if you'll run your business, Bill Bush, if you'll run your business the way that he's telling you to run the business and lean not to your own understanding, he wants to prosper you. And you're not limited. You have the mind of Christ. Do you understand? Don't think like that anymore. 
Think bigger. Amen. Don't limit God with your understanding. Trust him. Do what he says to do when he tells you to do it. Judges 7.7. 7. And the Lord said to Gideon, by the 300 men that lapped, I will save you and deliver the Midianites into your hand. And he let all the other people go, every man unto his place. One of the big things in our faith projects, at the very end of the day, when you receive whatever it is that you're believing for, okay, this is very, very important. Who's getting the glory? Why did Gideon not get to go to war with 300,000 men? Because then he would have gotten the glory for defeating all of these enemies. Why did God say, all right, send 12,000 of them home and leave him with how many? What was the second number? The second number. He had a big number, then he had a second number, and then he took that second number and he said, go lap up the water. And the ones that, that did it looking around, that was the 300 that he kept. God sent him with 300 men to defeat an army of tens of thousands. Who gets the glory out of that? Is there any way that Gideon could come back and say, well, you know, it was just the sheer planning of what I did. You know, I just really, you know, knew exactly. He was the scaredest guy out there. God had to send Gideon down to their camp and hear two of them talking about a dream they had about Gideon. That they saw Gideon as this big barley loaf rolling through their camp and destroying them all. Once Gideon heard that, he was like, I'm all in. I got this. Amen? But he did it with 300 men. I want to make sure that when it, whatever it is that I'm believing for, let's say that I'm believing God for a new car. And I don't know why. Maybe somebody, I keep going back to a car. Anybody believe in God for a car? All right, Jeannie. All right, we're believing God for a car. And so, Jeannie, what, you're believing for a Jeep? What do you want? A blue Kia. That's a big... No, no, I'm just saying, there's a lot of blue Kias. There's old ones, there's new ones, there's used ones. You have a picture of it, okay. So, we're believing God. Jeannie, she's been believing her and Fidel. Believing God for the Kia, amen? Believing God. She gets the car. God blesses the Sanchez family with the Kia. It's a powerful day. And then one day, or, or Aunt Martha the next day says, Jeannie, where'd you get that car? And Jeannie says, I believe God for it. Who just got the glory? I believe God. No, no, no. God blessed me. Now it's a testimony. It's not, look, look what I believe for. Look, whose faith was it to start with? It was his faith. Remember, he gave you the measure of faith? We have to be really wise about telling people what we have believed for because we're robbing him of the testimony that he should be getting. God did this. God blessed me with this car. God did it. And so now anybody that hears that, they're like, I think I like this God. God now gets the glory and the testimony of what he's done. Amen? I don't want the glory. I didn't believe for it. I stood for it. I did all this for it. Yes, you did. And, 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 and there should be some recognition for that. But at the end of the day, it was God who did this. God who brought the dead back to life. God who does the impossible. God who does stuff and just does it out of mercy sometimes. Even when we don't deserve it and haven't believed enough for it, he just does it anyway because he loves you so much. Amen? Because he loves you so much. Can you handle just a little bit more? Yes? All right. James chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. I'm going to start actually in verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy. Whenever you are enveloped in or an encounter trials of any sort or fall into various temptations. Verse 3. 
Be assured and understand that the trial and proving of your faith bring out endurance and steadfastness and patience. Amen? The testing of your faith. Count it all joy when you fall into various trials and temptations, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance and patience. We all are going to get tested in our faith, but all of our tests in faith are pop quizzes. Did you ever go into class on a Monday morning and your teacher said, there's a pop quiz today. Take out a piece of paper and a pencil. What's a pop quiz? You didn't know it was coming. Amen? You had no idea that that test was about to come. And so what's happening is you're being tested right then and there on the knowledge and information you have on whatever subject you were in. All tests of faith are pop quizzes. You don't know where it's going to pop up. You don't know when it's going to happen. And so what's important for me in my faith project? It's an open book test, folks. Faith is an open book test. I want to be prepared and open with the book so that when that pop-up test does come, I already have the answer to what the question is. Because when I get tempted with, is this ever going to happen? Why hasn't it happened? I start questioning everything. I start speaking against what I am believing. Amen. That is a test. And so what do I do when doubt comes? What do I do when the circumstances are not ripe to what I am believing for? That's faith. That's when I have to speak. It's, Lord, it doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what the doctor said. It doesn't matter what's going on around me. It doesn't matter what's going on in the, in the economy. It doesn't matter anywhere. All that matters is, is I got a word from you. And your word trumps every other word. He specializes in doing the impossible. He lives to do things that the world says are impossible. He lives to do it. He loves it. He thrives under those circumstances. Isn't he good? Amen. Well, I'm going to stop here. Thank you, Lord. Let's stand to our feet. Did you get some notes? Amen. We're going to continue on this next Tuesday night. Amen. Amen. We are all made in the very image and likeness of God. Yes or no? Are there any stepchildren in the kingdom? We're all firstborn children, men and women of the king, correct? Amen? He's endowed us with everything through Jesus Christ that we need to prosper here in the earth. But what we have to do is by faith go into the word and find out what those promises are, get revelation of them, and then voice activate them over my life. Psalm 91 is not going to be a reality for you unless you spent time in Psalm 91 getting revelation of it. You have to get revelation of it. That's how you prove the system is that I go in, there's a transfer of ownership, and now I operate in it the same way that the Bible operates in it. But see, that takes time. It takes patience, it takes discipline, and it takes also losing a lot of our fleshly desires. It's like going from banana splits to broccoli. It just is. Why do you think the flesh, why do you, because it, why do we eat? Because it tastes good. How does it get you? If, If chocolate pie didn't taste like chocolate pie, I wouldn't eat it. If it tasted like carrots, I wouldn't eat it. Amen? So we have to change our taste. Thank you, Lord. Father, we love you. We thank you for tonight. We thank you for the word of God. Lord, we just speak blessing and life and health and prosperity over this congregation. I just speak over the businesses in here, Lord, that they're blessed right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, for those that are looking for jobs, we call in jobs right now. It's a voice-activated system. So, Lord, I call in that job right now in the name of Jesus. 